WCBI News at 10 starts now. With the 2019 legislative session in full swing, some Mississippi Democrats are hopeful about the chance for bipartisan support on some key issues. Today, the Democratic caucus is focusing on its health care agenda. As Courtney Ann Jackson explains, Medicaid expansion is at the top of that list. The Democratic caucus says they have company in the push for Medicaid expansion. We see the ice breaking, so to speak. They say more Republicans seem open to the idea, but here's what Governor Bryant told us last week. Not at all. No, I think if you see, uh, in fact, yesterday I looked uh, at a poll that said the majority of uh, Americans believe that the, our federal judge in Texas ruled correctly, and we believe that Obamacare is unconstitutional. Democrats say the buck shouldn't stop there. He can say anything he wants to say, but we have a cadre of people who are running for higher office in this state, and those are the people, not the government. People who run for governor, lieutenant governor, attorney general. Each one of them are legislators or are leader, leaders in the legislature. All of a sudden, in an election year, all of them are for Medicaid expansion. Nobody's going to say no. So it's incumbent upon us to press that button. 2019 gubernatorial candidate Robert Foster is among the Republicans who are saying they're open to a different form of expansion. A serious look at waivers and potential way for us to allow people that can afford to help pay into that program to help cover the state's match. Uh, if, if there's a way for us to do that financially, we ought to look into it because we're turning away a tremendous amount of federal federal money every year. So who would expansion help? Dems say it would help working Mississippians and the state's small and rural hospitals that have been taking the full financial burden of uninsured patients. These are the 300,000 Mississippians who make too much to be uh, included right now in the existing Medicaid program, but they just do not make enough money to pay for private health insurance. Courtney Ann Jackson, WCBI News. A bill that allows electric co-ops to provide broadband services in Mississippi moves forward. Today, Speaker of the House Philip Gunn and uh, MS representative, House of Representative members passed the Mississippi Broadband Enabling Act 115 to 3. Gunn says he is proud of the House for stepping up to find a solution. The bill, he goes on to say that the bill is designed to protect the rate payer and provide transparency. New tonight, a Starkville home is seriously damaged. Now fire investigators are working to figure out what caused that blaze. It was just after 4 o'clock this evening when the fire broke out at a home on Old West Point Road. Starkville Fire Chief Charles Yarbrough says that the home received major smoke and fire damage. Yarbrough says no, that no injuries were reported. The cause of that fire remains under investigation. Across town, an old classic goes up in flames today. The driver of this Ford pickup noticed smoke coming from under the hood while driving down Spring Street this afternoon. He pulled over at a gas station before the flames started blowing out from the engine. You saw that smoke there. Firefighters were able to quickly get that fire extinguished. Again, nobody was injured. And a fire claims a century old home turned dog grooming business in Saltillo. Around 11 o'clock this morning, Sotelo firefighters responded to doggy doos on Mobile, Mobile Street. A man who was renting a portion of the building says that he was asleep when he noticed flames behind a bookshelf and called 911. It took more than two hours to get that fire put out. The building was destroyed, but no one was injured and no pets were inside that business. Well, the names of the three victims in yesterday's shooting in Artesia are released today. Lowndes County Coroner Greg Merchant identifies the victims as DeMario Snell, Mauricio Nance, and Tyshawn Bernard Fields, all from Lowndes County. People who live in Artesia are still shaken tonight. One of the victims lived there. The other two were from other Lowndes County towns. Ardori Talley spoke with neighbors and a family about what they describe as a nightmare. Three people was murdered. That, that it, just, it seemed unreal. It seemed like a dream or something that you just gonna wake up from. I thought I was dreaming. I, I thought a tragedy like this it would never happen in our teacher because we're so close together as as friends and family. Lowndes County investigators say two victims were found inside this home. A third victim was in the backyard. These were some good guys. They I never know either one of these guys to be in any kind of trouble. So these some wonderful fellows. They were raised by good people, so these were good guys. 
and we just don't understand why would this how could this happen? When Danielle Price heard police heading to the scene, she followed them. She says that's when she and her mother saw her cousin, 22-year-old Mauricio Nance, laying on the ground face down. She said every time she closed her eyes, she see him laying there and she just crying, crying, crying. So I'm praying to God that she will soon get over this, you know, because we never had this happen in Artesia. Price says she hadn't seen him in so long until Tuesday at the crime scene. He was only here for like 45 minutes, 45 minutes. And he, and I mean, my cousin said he seen him walking down here. He was sitting on the porch and he just jumped up, said he was going to get a cigarette. And next thing you know, he was gone. Sonia Price is also cousins with Nance. She said he was more like a son to her. Why did he have to do this? This three young men that you took their life, you hurt a lot of people. A lot of people is hurted from this, including his family, because they had no idea that he would do nothing like this. Now, deputies have a person of interest in custody. Anyone with information on the crimes is asked to call the Lowndes County Sheriff's Office or the Golden Triangle Crime Stoppers. On a much lighter note, time to toss things over to Chief Meteorologist Keith Gibson with a first look at our forecast. Hey, Keith. Scott, right now we have temperatures in the 40s. We have some clouds streaming back into the region. You can see these low clouds in gray, some higher clouds in white. But suffice to say, clouds are coming back in. We do expect to see some showers break out later tonight into tomorrow morning. So this is the morning commute. Do be advised there will be some rain around, so you may want to have the umbrella on standby. Our high tomorrow on Thursday, somewhere in the mid-50s. Winds from the south at about 5 to 15. The chance of rain about 50%. Generally speaking, a quarter of an inch of rain or less. A bigger system on Saturday and also a temperature roller coaster ride for the weekend. More on that in just a few minutes, Scott. He's a man who has lived his life flying the skies, and over five decades ago, he flew the first T-38 to the Columbus Air Force Base. Today, at 85, he got back. To, he got to sit back in the pilot seat, so to speak. Flying is a passion for retired Lieutenant Colonel James L. Cole. Somebody now says, says. <laughs> You want to go fly an airplane? I said, what kind? He's a little pickier these days when it comes to going up in the air or what he's going up in. It's a, a tail dragger. I would like that. I like that. Tail dragger or drag tail? My wife, of all people, calls it a drag tail. She said, are you going to go fly a drag tail? I said, it's not a drag tail. It's a tail dragger. And she said, oh, okay. <laughs> So that's how it is. I just love it. The retired pilot spent the afternoon in a T-38 simulator at the Columbus Air Force Base, reliving a dream that was a huge part of his career. So much water has passed under the bridge with so many other airplanes. I was amazed that I can remember uh, final approach speed and then some of the some of the acro speeds and so forth. But that's about it. Other than that, it's not a lot of difference. But the landing seemed to go okay. 54 years ago, Lieutenant Colonel Cole brought Columbus's first ever T-38 from Vance Air Force Base in Enid, Oklahoma for an upcoming air show. He said, we need somebody to fly a T-38 down to a little air base in Mississippi. And I said, what's, what's the air base? And they said, Columbus. I said, I'm your guy. So, so that's, how I got the, that's how I got the job to come down here. That's not the only first for this veteran pilot. Years ago, when simulators were being invented, Cole helped design simulators being made in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I simply uh, went over there to, to advise them what I thought that needed to be changed and what, need, you know, what, what didn't need to be changed. And if it flew like I thought the airplane flew, you know, to, to help them out because they weren't pilots. They were just simulator people. Lieutenant Colonel Cole retired from the military after 23 years of service. He also soared the skies as an American Airlines pilot, doing just what he says he was born to do, fly. Just like putting on a silk glove, I thought, I can do this, and I can do it well. So, and, and sure enough, it just always, it just came to me very easy. It was never, never a challenge to me. It was always just easy to do and something I really enjoyed. Cole also spent time working for the FAA. He lives with his wife in Montgomery, Texas. Well, one teacher's passion for history lands her in the spotlight. Annette Glover is the WCBI Educator of the Week. Now, she teaches history at Golden Triangle Early College High School. Glover doesn't consider her kids students, but rather independent thinkers. She says it's her job to show these young adults 
how history can repeat itself and inspire them to make a change for the future. Their ninth grade year, I teach them government and economics, and I believe that um, because they're our future, they're future voters, they're future citizens that are going to make changes. I want them to see that the passion that they have inside can be put to use. To nominate a teacher, just visit WCBI.com. Clouds building on in right now. A live look in downtown Tupelo shows quiet conditions. We are in the 40s. We are watching areas back to the west for rain showers. They are developing. Your full forecast is next. WCBI's Educator of the Week is brought to you by Food Giant, where your neighbors are the owners. Your WCBI First Alert AccuWeather Forecast with Chief Meteorologist Keith Gibson. All right, more clouds on Thursday. We start out in the 40s, back into the 50s, as we mentioned earlier. Rain chances ramping on up later tonight into our morning tomorrow. Today, though, we really enjoyed a lot of sunshine. This is our Alpha Insurance Camera Network. Now, as we went through time, we did see some clouds advance from the west. And uh, check out Louisville there. We watched this low cloud deck right there scoot on in this evening. Now we're all seeing those clouds fill back in tonight. And showers, look at that, showers developing there in Louisiana and Arkansas, a sign of things to come. So later tonight and tomorrow, we will have some rain. We've got 40s now. Futurecast doing a pretty good job picking up on the situation. And as we get into tomorrow morning for the commute, scattered showers possible, temperatures in the mid to upper 40s. So if anything, temperatures may actually rise a few degrees in some spots during the overnight hours. We should top out somewhere in the 50s. This is noon. 50s and some scattered showers continuing. I think the best rain chance tomorrow during the first half of the day, not as active during the second half, but still a shower or two maybe out and about. Generally speaking here, less than a quarter of an inch of rain overall for our Thursday. Heavier showers and storms possible on Saturday, maybe one to two inches, maybe just maybe a few flakes of wet snow late Saturday into Sunday morning as some cold air rushes on in behind the next system. And look at that, a ferocious storm out there in California and we have this active jet stream and when we see something like this, this big huge dip right there, that usually means something is going to happen and that's what's going to happen here in the southeast. So Friday, the area of low pressure starts to get more organized across the high plains. We will see a cold front come on in, some heavier rain, some storms possible here. Now on the back side of this thing, Saturday evening and Sunday morning, you notice a little bit of pink and some blue. Yes, there may be a little mixed bag a precip. No impacts really expected at this point, just because of the moisture is going to be on the way out before the real cold air can come on in. Now it will be blustery and pretty decent overall on Sunday, just cold and breezy. Highs mainly in the 30s here as we close out the weekend. So your Saturday, even with the rain, we are expecting 60s. Now the front will come on in, and by the evening and overnight, we start to see that northwesterly flow develop and much cooler, mainly 30s here for our Sunday. Let's check out your AccuWeather 70 forecast. Here you go, 55 tomorrow, 58 on Friday, 65 or so Saturday if we're lucky, a mild day before the front moves on through some heavier rain and storms. And then as we get into your Sunday, 30s we're thinking for the most part, bluster and cold, 20 Sunday night, 44 Monday, 50 on Tuesday. So a quick jab of cold air, Scott, for Sunday and maybe early Monday, but we'll moderate a little bit by the middle of the week. Coming up a little later in sports, we take a look at one of the more unique mascots in SEC football. Stay with us. Welcome back, everyone. Hypothermia occurs when your body loses more heat than it can produce, and some people are more at risk than others. We should find out more in tonight's Health Talk with Baptist. People who may have a higher risk of hypothermia include elderly people, especially those who may not have enough heat, food, or clothing, adults under the influence of alcohol or drugs, people who are mentally ill, people who spend long periods of time outdoors, babies, and young children. Risk may also be increased by certain medicines and conditions that make it harder for your body to stay warm. The major signs and symptoms of hypothermia depend on the body temperature. The major initial sign for an adult is a decrease in mental function that leads to impaired ability to make decisions. Other signs include tiredness or lethargy, changes in speech, disorientation. For example, the person will act as if they are drunk. 
The body gradually loses protective reflexes such as shivering, which is an important heat generating defense. In fact, shivering may stop as hypothermia progresses. Other symptoms include slow, shallow breathing, drowsiness or exhaustion, loss of coordination, fumbling hands, stumbling steps, and a slow, weak pulse. In severe hypothermia, a person may be unconscious without signs of breathing or a pulse. Hypothermia symptoms for infants include cold to touch, bright red skin, and an unusually low energy level. Join us next time for Health Talk with Baptist when we will discuss how we treat hypothermia and how you can prevent being a victim. Mail your topic suggestions to Health Talk at WCBI.com. Health Talk has been brought to you by Baptist Memorial Hospital Golden Triangle. Tony the Land Shark is unlike most mascots, and his story separates him from the rest. More from Oxford coming up next in sports. WCBI Sports with Tom Apple. For many, mascots are the staple of school spirit. There's the familiar ones like the Tigers, the Wildcats, the Bulldogs. What about the unfamiliar ones? Ole Miss is one school with a fresh new face, and WCBI Sports' Courtney Robb reports from Oxford with more. Visit any sporting event at the University of Mississippi and you find the usual. Some wild fans, energetic cheerleaders, and of course, a rich history. But Ole Miss does have one thing, unlike any of the aforementioned, and his name is Tony. No one else has a, a land shark. Um, you know, he's he's unique to Ole Miss. Developed by the student body, the unorthodox mascot was modeled after the memory and mentality of former Ole Miss linebacker Tony Fine, the first person in history to ever throw the infamous fins up. That's giving the signal there of sharks, blood in the water, and the sharks are going after it. It really came about from the embracing of a, 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 a sort of a swagger type way of going about things, a, a mark of, of of confidence, a mark of accomplishment, um, uh, even a, a mark of hello, you know, greeting. It's, you know, it's, it, it can be used in many ways. But there is no one Tony, but rather it's a team of six foot individuals playing the land shark character. Everybody that does fit that build, um, you come to tryouts and you get to try on the suit. Um, we give you, uh, like, we give you some band music and say, like, okay, so the band's playing the fight song, like, how are you going to react? Um, we practice not talking in the suit. We practice all having the same walk. Um, we would hate to have, you know, one Tony skips and one Tony is like really slow. We want him to just be a, you know, one character. I wanted to learn myself of what it took to be Tony. And I figured what better way to learn than to learn from the master himself. Here with the Tony, the land shark Tony. What is it like being you? What's your favorite go-to pose? Can you give me your favorite go-to pose? Oh, okay, okay, interesting. And then Tony, can you give me a big? Can, you, can we do the fins up together? How do? You, can you t teach me how to do it? Like that? Perfect. I tell people all the time, <clears throat> you're not going to find a more poignant or meaningful mascot story in all of college athletics. So. How important is it to remember Tony Fine through the land shark? It's, it, it can't be stated how important it is. It's, it's, it's awesome to see. I think people really love him because he is unique and he does have a great story. And, you know, he's named after somebody who was really important to our university. And I think knowing all of that and knowing his history um, just makes people love him even more. Anyone that is interested in becoming a Tony should look for information come February. Reporting in Oxford, Courtney Robb, WCBI Sports. Great story from Courtney and a fun time to be Tony with Ole Miss basketball on the rise. The stage is set for one of college basketball's best rivalries in the women's game. Number, number seven, Hale State Hoops preparing to face number 15, South Carolina in Starkville. Two completely different teams this time around. The Bulldogs missing the Fab Four senior class from last year. South Carolina missing Asia Wilson, who's no longer there to terrorize MSU in the interior. Head coach Vic Schaefer says, don't let the record fool you when it comes to the Gamecocks. They've really uh, had, you know, they played some really good teams early, and um, and the thing that impresses me most is they've gotten so much better, and and that's what you do, you know, when you 
when you coach kids and coach teams, and each team's different, and, and uh, um, you know, we're finding out what life's like without those four seniors a year ago, and and um, they've been able to really, I think, uh, uh, find out and find uh, out who they are, and boy, they're really good. MSU in South Carolina tip off at 6 p.m. inside the hump. The game will be broadcasted on ESPN. Heritage Academy senior Lex Rogers signs to continue his soccer career at Bellhaven University. The all-district athlete has been a, a team captain since the ninth grade and also participated in the Olympic Development Program while representing Alabama. Rogers also starred on the gridiron for Heritage Academy. We'll have a last look at your forecast coming up right after the break. All right, here's our 70 forecast. Some showers tomorrow. We are looking at some 50s, 58 Friday, 60 Saturday, heavier rain and storms, and then some cold weather on Sunday, but a short lived cold snap, but a little punch in the gut there, real quick. Yeah, but at least it's short lived. I like what you said there, short lived. Yes, like we'll, we'll get through it. All right, thanks, Steve. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you tomorrow.